What's up everyone, Terraquake here, and I'm back with another Pokemon Challenge video. Pokemon Red using the weakest moves was incredibly tough, but I'm still not taking it easy with this challenge. Today, I'm going to figure out how fast I can beat Pokemon Emerald with only one Metagross. Metagross is a Steel Psychic type, and it's the fully evolved form of Beldum. It's also the pseudo-legendary of the Hoenn region, with a base stat total of 600. Right off the bat, Metagross gets some good stab moves like Confusion and Metal Claw. Other than that though, it's only amazing moves that it learns by level up are Psychic, Meteor Mash, and Hyper Beam. Metagross has some pretty good type coverage though, as it gets access to TMs like Earthquake, Shadow Ball, Brick Break, Sludge Bomb, and Aerial Ace. However, it can't learn an Electric type move, which makes me very worried for the Wallace battle. Anyways, time for damn rules. I can only use Metagross in battle, I'll have to catch other Pokemon for HM use only, so they will not be allowed in combat. No items in battle, only Pokeballs, held items, and items outside of battle are allowed. And do I even need to mention no glitches or exploits anymore? Because I feel like that's already known. By the way, just like my first Pokemon Emerald speedrun, I'm going to end the challenge after defeating Wallace, since you get your official in-game time in the Hall of Fame. I started off by setting the tech speed to fast, turning battle animations off, and setting the battle style to set in order to do this as fast as possible. I then replaced Atrico with Metagross using the Universal Pokemon Randomizer. I replaced Atrico so May would have Torchic, the hardest starter to fight. I then nicknamed Metagross Iron Man. Because that's cool, right? Anyways, the first battle against May wasn't hard at all, since Torchic doesn't even know a Fire-type move yet. In Rustboro City, I decided to grab the Quick Claw in the Trainer School, because I think it'll come in handy. However, I was an idiot and forgot to give it to Metagross before battling Roxanne. It didn't matter though, since her first Geodude went down to three Metal Claws, as I got an attack boost as well. Her second Geodude got one shot, and even with the Ornberry, Nosepass died in two hits. After saving the beautifulest bird in the world, I decided to do the optional rival battle in Rustboro just for some extra experience. Lotad died in two confusions, and Torchic's Ember did more damage than I thought it would, but he still went down in two hits. Brawly ended up being tougher than I thought he would be. Machop went down to some confusions after Brawly used a Super Potion. Meditite set up a light screen, and then Brawly used another Super Potion. This forced me to use Metal Claw, which was still a 3-hit KO. Last out was Makihita, but after the light screen wore off, I easily won the battle. While battling Team Aqua and Slateport, I realized that Carvanas and Sharpedos could be a big problem later on in this run, because I can't hit them with my Psychic-type moves, and they resist my Steel-type moves. Anyways, May was ready to battle again under the Cycling Road. Wingle got two shot, Kimbuskin nearly died in one hit, but finished himself off, and Lumbre went down in three confusions. Going into Watson's gym, I knew I wasn't going to win, but I just wanted to see where I stood. Luckily, I confused Voltorb, and he hit himself, so another confusion did the trick. For some reason, Electric decided to use Howl, so he easily went down. However, Confusion barely does anything to Magneton, and he always goes for Sonic Boom, which automatically does 20 damage, so Metagross did die. I need to do a bit of grinding, but not only will that add a bunch of time, but Metagross doesn't get any helpful moves until level 38, so I think I'm just gonna have to try and brute force my way through this fight. Well, I completely forgot to record my winning attempt against Watson, but all I did was get up a couple of levels, teach Rock Smash to Metagross, and give him a Cherry Berry, so the fight was actually pretty easy. Maxi was an easier battle than I thought it would be. My clear body ability blocked Mightyena's Intimidate, which was actually really nice. Eventually, I took him down with a few Rock Smashes after Maxi used a Super Potion. Camera up got me all the way down to 33 HP with Ember and Magnitude, but I was barely able to finish him off with some confusions. Last out was Zubat, but of course, he died in a single hit. Just like Watson, I cannot beat Flannery at my current level. I'm able to make it through Numble and Slugma just fine with confusion, but Camera Up eats my hits way better. The only reason I was able to make it to Torkoal on this try was because she missed an overheat, 
and then went for tackle for some strange reason. Anyways, Torkoal easily one-shot me with an overheat. I guess it's back to grinding and adding time to that in-game clock. At level 38, I got Psychic, which made this battle 10 times easier. Once again, I got lucky as Camera up to mist and overheat, so a Metal Claw and Psychic killed her. Torkoal is back out, but wasted her time setting up Sunny Day, so two Psychics finally won us the battle. At last, I finally had an easy gym fight against my dad. Luckily, I got through Confusion to kill Spinda, and then I snapped out of Confusion to one-shot Vigoroth. Slacking couldn't hit me that hard, and combined that with his Truant ability, and he easily went down. Last out was Linoon, who died to a Psychic and a Rock Smash after Norman used a couple of Hyper Potions. While going through the Weather Institute, I realized that Carvanas and Sharpedos actually won't be too much of a problem, since I now have Rock Smash. I guess I spoke too soon then. Anyways, Mei was ready to battle outside the Weather Institute. Her annoying Pelipper got off a double protect before getting one shot by a Psychic, and after that, Combuskin and Lombre also went down in one hit. To be honest, Winona was probably more annoying than actually tough to battle. Swablu died to a Metal Claw, but Altaria was able to hang on from a Metal Claw and a Psychic, so Winona used a Hyper Potion. She also got off a powerful Earthquake before going down to a few more hits. Tropius went down pretty easily, so Skarmory was up next. I couldn't hit Skarmory that hard, but she couldn't hit me back any harder, so eventually, I just whittled her down until Skarmory died. Last out was Pelipper, who of course went for Protect, and then Supersonic. Luckily, I didn't have bad confusion luck, so Pelipper finally went down after a little while. For once, I decided to take on Mei in Lily Cove City before heading to Mount Pyre. I know I'm just a savage, aren't I? However, this battle was a psychic show, as Mei barely put any damage on me, and all of her Pokemon went down to one or two psychics. And now I got to watch Archie make the worst decision of his life, because he can't tell the difference between red and blue. From Archie on Mount Pyre, it was time for Maxi in the Jagged Pass. Mariana immediately went for Swagger, and then I started to hit myself. Due to that, and me also getting hit from takedown, I killed Mariana with only 49 HP remaining. But after that, Camerupt easily finished me off. I know guys, I just have the best confusion luck in the world. On my second attempt, I didn't get completely screwed over by Swagger, so Camerupt easily went down to a couple of psychics, and Crobat flinched me twice in a row before I one-shot him with a single hit point left. Seriously, what is my luck? I taught Shadow Ball to Metagross, which made the Psychic Gym a lot easier. I also forgot to deposit some of my Pokemon for the double battle, but it didn't matter anyways. Claydol got off an Earthquake before dying to a few Shadow Balls. Solrock and Lunatone easily went down, and since Zatu was killing my other Pokemon during the battle, I had plenty of health left to also take him down. Archie was really easy to defeat, since this time around, I got good luck with Swagger, so besides Mightyena, all of his Pokemon got one shot. I thought Juan was going to take a couple of attempts, but I managed to defeat him the first time around. Love Disk and Whiskash went down to a few Psychics, so Celio was up next. Metal Claw only did about a third of his health, and then I of course got confused by Water Pulse. I still took him down with a Psychic, but Crawdon is where I got extremely unlucky. I kept on hitting myself, and Crawdon hit me with a boosted crab hammer since it was raining. Luckily, he went for a taunt two turns in a row for some reason, so I killed him with two earthquakes. Last out was Kingdra, and he could have easily finished me off, but Kingdra went for double team instead, and then I got a critical psychic to win the battle. My luck has just been a roller coaster recently. The battle against Wally in Victory Road was straightforward as I used Metal Claw, Psychic, and Earthquake to cleanly mop the floor with his team. Anyways, after going through Victory Road, here's my stats and moves. Since I'm kind of underleveled and I really don't have too many type advantages, I'm not sure if I'll win at my current level, but there's only one way to find out. First up was Sydney, the Dark Type Master. Mightyena went down in two Metal Claws, so Shiftry was up next. 
a Metal Claw and Earthquake didn't kill him, and then Shiftry went for Swagger. Sydney then used a Full Restore as I hit myself, and then missed two Metal Claws, which allowed Shiftry to get off another Swagger. Luckily, he could only hit me with extra sensory, so once I connected with Metal Claw, it was a one shot. As a matter of fact, the rest of the fight was a clean one shot sweep, yet I only had 3 HP remaining in the end. Next up was Phoebe, the Ghost Type Master. Dusclops went down to a Shadow Ball and Earthquake after Phoebe used a Full Restore and I hit myself in confusion. Her second Dusclops and first Bennett also died to some Shadow Balls as I leveled up and got Meteor Mash in the process. However, I of course missed my first Meteor Mash, but the next one connected to one shot Sableye, and Phoebe's second Bennett also went down in a single hit. The third Elite Four member was Glacia, the Ice type master. Celia went down to two Psychics as she only set up a hail. However, Walrein is way bulkier, so even after using two Psychics and a Shadow Ball, I still couldn't kill her, so Metagross eventually died. But with the right move choices, I think I can win. And I was right, Celio took longer to go down, but I went for Meteor Mash on Walrein, which two shot him, since I got an attack boost. And after that, I only missed once, so I mopped the floor with the rest of Glacia's team. The last Elite Four member was Drake, the Dragon type master. I can easily kill Shelgon after he stalls me for a bit, but Flygon is just too strong. He outspeeds me, and always two shots me with Earthquake. I tried this battle many more times, but it was always the same outcome. So I'm going to hunt down some rare candies and then try again. At level 64, I made it past Flygon and one shot Salamance with a Meteor Mash since I got an attack boost earlier in the battle. As you can see, I got yet another attack boost while doing that, so I easily took down Kingdra and Altaria as well. I'll admit, I got very lucky with Meteor Mash on that attempt. Time for Wallace, the champion. Wailord went down in two psychics as he only used Rain Dance. Whiskash wasted his time using Amnesia, so two Earthquakes did the trick. I did about half of Gyarados' health with Psychic, but since he used a Dragon Dance, he got off a powerful Earthquake before going down. Tentacruel went down to a single Earthquake, and I crit Ludicolo with a Psychic to one-shot him. Let me just say, that critical hit was huge. Last out was Milotic, who tried to stall me out with Recover, but since my Earthquakes were doing more damage than she was healing, I won the battle. To be honest, I'm really surprised that I won within my first couple of tries. Well, let's check out my time. 6 hours and 42 minutes, okay? That's 33 minutes longer than my Deoxys speedrun, but I expected this run to be a little longer, since Metagross obviously isn't a legendary. I think the biggest setbacks were me having to grind for Watson and Flannery, and also hunting down all of those rare candies. By the way, if any of you guys want to try to beat my time, feel free to. Anyways, I'm not sure what I'll be doing for my next challenge run, but it'll probably be in Pokemon White 2. As always, feel free to leave any other challenge suggestions that you have in the comment section below. And if you want to see more of my challenge runs, then you can check out the playlist that I left a link to in the description. Also, if you want to see more Pokemon content from me, I do a lot of Nuzlocke series and card openings here on the channel. For now though, if you guys enjoyed this video, then be sure to drop a like, subscribe, and hit that bell to see more. And until next time, deuces!